think I wouldn't really understand because all I asked you guys to do is a step-by-step -step formula, which I do not think doing the first two steps would have been anything difficult for anybody to do. All you simply do is to replace f of x with y is the square root of x, right? So that would make sense. You could do that for every single problem, correct? Right, Frank? Every single problem, you could replace f of x with y. Then step number two is not too bad. All you simply had to do for step number two is just swap. So when I walk around and check your homework, I would expect that every single problem, at least everybody did this. Because I mean, this is literally just replacing one letter for another and then swapping them. That's it. That's all, that's all I asked for step one and step two. So I'd assume that everybody would have, everybody would have that for at least um, the first two steps. Step three, I can see, can be a little bit more difficult. But again, if you guys just follow through, um, through what we have you know, gone through this year and previous years, if you have a value in the denominator and you want to get rid of it, you need to multiply by the um, reciprocal of it. So I have square root of y, y in the new, uh, denominator. I'm going to multiply by square root of y in the numerator. to get rid of it on both sides. So therefore, I have the square root of y times x equals 1. Now again, we're still trying to solve for y, right? Correct? So I need to divide by x. And I have the square root of y equals 1 over x. Now, to undo the square root, I'm going to have to square. So therefore, my final answer is y equals 1 over x squared, because 1 squared is 1, and x squared would obviously be x squared. And then step 4 is I simply go ahead and rewrite this um, at what my y with an f inverse. And that's it. Now the last thing we need to do is check, the, check for it to be an inverse. And if you guys go ahead and take a look and see if this is an inverse, um, if you plug in a number in for x, yeah, all you're doing is just squaring it, and then taking 1 and dividing by that number. But there's no plus or minus. There's no reason for us to believe that there's going to be two solutions, correct? You're just going to have one solution. Whatever number you plug in from there is going to be your answer, or I mean, it's going to be your one answer. So this inverse is a function. Okay. So Deanna, since I went through four examples for you guys, showing you how to